In a small Iowa town, an exciting day turns tragic when a water tower comes tumbling down, leaving three lives hanging in the balance. It happened so quickly and it was such a shocking moment. July 2000, reporter Brian Schultz is dispatched to New Providence, Iowa, to cover the installation of a brand new water tower. It looks pretty good, don't it? It does. Getting the water tower was a point of pride for New Providence. It was something they had been trying to get done for quite a while, so it was quite a big deal. New Providence raises enough money to purchase its very first tower. The remote town of a little more than 200 people is all a buzz. Anyone who was at home at the time, they were going to go out and see this happen. As local residents gather in the streets, a 150-foot crane rises and successfully lifts the four steel legs into position. There were some gentlemen on top of the tank that were attaching these straps to a central point that the crane would lift up. There were a few gentlemen on the ground that were kind of directing them. Uh, and there was a gentleman on top of the crane that was waiting for all of this to happen. I remember even at the time, I was pretty impressed with how cautious they were being. We're going to lift off. With two workers poised on the tower, the container begins its delicate 100-foot climb to the top. The tank being lifted was a pretty laborious process. It was very slow, uh, very deliberate. It seemed to have taken maybe five or ten minutes to get it that 100 feet off the ground. And once they did, it was a probably another 10 or 15 minutes to get the tank oriented correctly above the legs. The crane operator, nearly 130 feet in the air, lowers the container closer and closer while his co-workers guide its placement with the attached cables. As one of the men begins his climb down to the ground, the crane suddenly starts to shift. Within seconds, to the horror of those watching below, the crane carrying the container gives way, colliding with the legs of the water tower. With cables breaking, the container drops, steel stanchions snapping like twigs. The crane and tower sway toward the spectators. The crane operator and two other workers are caught in the collision as tons of metal slam down on the ground. Oh, my God. Ryan Schultz is standing nearby. I saw the, the tower twist clockwise slightly and start falling in my direction. Uh, and I do remember that it seemed to take forever to fall. It just seemed to take a very, very long time for the top of the tower and the crane to hit the ground. Schultz and local residents scramble to safety. I turned around from running. There was a lot of dust from, from it hitting. There were sparks. There was a nearby uh, power line that had been hit. Um, and you know, I heard a lot of people screaming. I really didn't think there'd be any survivors based on what I'd seen. The tower lands just feet from a home, a gaping hole on its top where the crane slammed down. The twisted wreckage is scattered across the neighborhood. You could recognize that the tower was a water tower or the remains of a water tower, uh, but a lot of the metal was twisted, um, dented up. Um, and at about that point, I realized the crane had come down as well. Uh, and that was completely crumbled. The rigging on the crane was twisted beyond recognition. The 24-year-old crane operator suffers critical injuries, but survives the accident. One of the workers on the tower, protected by the cage surrounding the ladder, is in good condition. Tragically, the other worker is airlifted to the hospital, but does not survive. I'm not sure what anyone could have done to avoid this. There was a significant amount of compacted earth at the job site that was covering a liquid mud slurry uh, that was undetectable from the surface. They had the outriggers in the correct places, uh, but there was just so much weight uh, on the ground that uh, it collapsed into that mud slurry. Oh my God. The residents of New Providence vowed to rebuild the tower in honor of the fallen, but we'll never forget that tragic day. I look back on that experience with some awe with what had happened, and I also, I'm a little bit grateful personally in how uh, I felt it brought the community of New Providence together. They had a, something to rally around. They were so proud of those men who, who built that water tower for them.